Okay, guys, we will get started in about a minute. Uh, we have an exciting uh, webinar for you today. Okay, so you are seeing our uh, speakers for the day. And let me just uh, give you a little time to talk about them. But before that, let me welcome you all. Good, good evening, good morning, good night, wherever you are in different parts of the world. Welcome to another exciting uh, uh, webinar as part of the IUCE GEDC IFIS webinar series. Okay, so, uh, so we have with us uh, two speakers who are in the Boston area. Okay, MathWorks Boston. Uh, some of you might remember that I used to be in the Boston area for 25 years since then I was telling them that I I, don't, I will not miss the snow this year because I'm now in India in Hyderabad. So anyway, we have with us, uh, uh, you can see the big smiles on their faces, right? Lauren uh, and, and and Roberto, okay? So Lauren Tabolinsky Tebol joined MathWorks in 2008. Uh, before joining MathWorks, Lauren was an education product manager at Harvard Business School Publishing. Lauren currently manages academic programs at MathWorks, including the student competition program, and the student ambassador program and uh, the links to those are available in the abstract on, on our uh, on our website that was uh, pro promoting this uh, this meeting uh, lauren holds a degree in business administration and marketing from monmouth university and a master's degree in marketing communications from emerson college and then our good friend roberto valenti is currently a research scientist at mathworks where he's responsible for research collaborations in the areas of autonomous systems and deep learning, and he leads the MathWorks Excellence in Innovation program. Uh, previously, he worked as a research and development engineer within the autonomous driving team at NVIDIA. He obtained a PhD in electrical engineering at the City University of New York, uh, the City College, New York, USA, where he focused his research on state estimation and control for autonomous navigation of micro aerial vehicles and a master's degree in electronics engineering from the University of Catania, Italy. Oh, wow, okay. Over to you guys. I'm gonna turn out here, turn off my video. Hi, everybody. Um, I just wanted to say thanks for joining today. And I'm excited to talk to you all about the Excellence and in Innovation Program. And at the end of the presentation, I'm gonna go over a few other student programs that we have to offer. So I'll pass it over to Roberto to get us started. Yeah, thank you, Lauren, and thank you so much, Krishna, and all the organizers for giving us this opportunity to talk about uh, our program. And of course, thanks to all the, uh, the attendees for joining today. Um, yeah, so as Krishna already said, I'm a research scientist at MathWorks. Um, you know, I'm uh, responsible for research collaboration. So uh, this is beyond, you know, our program. But if you're also interested in uh, um, do collaborations and if you do research, well, I'm also the person for, for that, in particular, I focus on robotics, autonomous systems, and deep learning, giving, giving my background. All right, but let's let's go talk about the Matrix Excellence Innovation Program. So for today, the agenda will be the following. So we'll start talking about the, the program, what it is, so the, an overview of the program and the objectives. And then Lauren will talk about the various student programs that we have at Matrix. And clearly, at the end of this presentation, we'll open the floor for a question and answer. Okay, um, so we've been talking about this Matrix Excellence Innovation Program. So what it is and why, first of all, we created this program. So as you probably know already, Matrix with MATLAB, Simulink, and all the toolboxes is available to most of the universities around the world. So that probably makes more than 5 million um, engineering science college level students in the world that have access to our tools. Um, and more than two millions are actually users. So they actually have activated the, the tools and they use it. So if you roughly take a fifth, one fifth of this number, so there are at least, but there are definitely much more than one million uh, capstone final year you know, projects, thesis that are underway, they go underway each, each year. And we thought, okay, that's a lot of projects that most of the time you know, don't get used after you know at the end of the um, of the class. So perhaps if they use our tools, the these projects can be shared uh, out there openly to everyone, and that could be a good way 
uh, to showcase how to use our tools and of course help the community to build on top of these examples. Um, so that's why we thought maybe we can do something there to take advantage to leverage these projects. Um, at the same time, we believe from the educator's perspective, this program can be very useful because they require, a, you know, if, if you know much better than myself, if you, uh, if you have a senior design class or capstone class, you need to come up with uh, a large number of projects, sometimes up to 50 or more, uh, that needs to be to have an industry relevance because that's what the students need to do. They need to put in practice what they've learned and to, to start their career um, in the industry, uh, most likely. So, uh, and that, that's a very hard job. At the same time, uh, we, can, we can motivate students with our reward, you know, giving visi uh, get visibility to Matworks and other companies. So that could be useful for them as well. So that we thought, okay, so if we do a program uh, as we are doing, we can help not only ourselves, but also educators and students. Uh, here, uh, I'm not here to explaining what exponential learning is because you are the experts, you, you know much better than I do, but uh, definitely we believe that exponential learning is a very important way, a very important, important approach for students to learn, learn by doing, and we believe that with our program we can also contribute to exponential learning by providing a list of grand challenges that can be used for senior design or capstone uh, classes. Um, among all the different types of experiential learning, um, we focus, of course, on the curriculum integrated experiential learning. And um, we, we worked with several professors uh, to start this program. And it was great to see that one of the professors we work with from Florida State University uh, believed or see that these grand challenges as a great way for students to learn and uh, using experiential learning. So this is uh, his quotes, and, and uh, we were very happy uh, to see that. Okay, so now let's go more into the details of the, the program. So first of all, what are the objectives? Um, the objectives of this program are, well, first of all, leverage. So an overview is leverage the work that has been performed by students, both level undergrad to graduate level students during their capstone senior design project of final year assignment or to be master thesis, you know, anything to solve challenging industry problems because our tools are related to uh, to industry then actually most of our customers are uh, industry customers and uh, our tools are used a lot and then of course we try to uh, to provide a list of, of projects that are uh, industry related so i guess that's that's the main uh, thing of this program of these projects and and show how our products are connected to industry um, and clearly at the end it's drive usage of our products in academia uh, from the educators and, and, and the student side, uh, as I mentioned already, we provide a list of compelling projects that are based on industry needs. And I want to emphasize that as by industry needs, we don't, we don't say, we don't mean only matrix needs. This is not, these are not just projects that we care about. Of course we do, but these are also projects that our customers do care. So some of them, of these projects came up after discussions with our customers. So Again, this list is important not only for us. So I guess this is a very important part of, of, of this program. Uh, and again, we provide this list for educators. And at the same time, students can gain practical experience of, you know, on tools that are um, used in industry and insight into technology trends. Uh, and again, this is very important for their uh, future, future career. Um, uh, Moreover, we provide endorsement, like rewards. Uh, for example, we provide this certificate of accomplishment here, as you can see. Uh, this is usually very important. Students like to, to show this on uh, LinkedIn or other social media. And, and most of the time, uh, this is listed in, our, in their resume and it's very important for students. We also provide referral for um, position on Matworks. Here, I'm list, uh, listing uh, internship position, student ambassador, but also uh, full-time position, uh, especially if the solution that students provide is very convincing. Uh, LinkedIn recommendation and other gadgets like t-shirts. Uh, you know, usually uh, t-shirts are, are very well received by, by students. Uh, we could consider other rewards in the future, but that's what we have and so far has worked well. <clears throat> okay, so I've talked about this program. 
by what it is in practice, right? So this program, what we provide externally is a list of projects. So design a research project with industry relevance uh, centered around technology trends. So we identified these 10 technology trends that are very uh, important topics currently, or we can call them mega trends, if you will. As you can see, some of them are AI, autonomous vehicles, big data, again, very hot topics at the moment. And we have this list of projects centered around this technology trend on a GitHub repository. So we, we chose GitHub because it's very common among students and researchers and, and uh, all the repositories are very easy to discover through GitHub. So we provide this list um, and in return, what we ask is that the solutions that the students uh, submit eventually adopt our tools, Matrix products, clearly, and that they publish uh, the solutions on their own GitHub repository publicly under an open source license. So again, this is just a way to help the community so that other people, other students and researchers can build on top of those examples that have been um, provided and submitted by, by students. And this is an example how the um, GitHub repository main page looks like. I will show you the actual web page later on. But as you can see, there is this uh, main um, table content, if you will. There is just a list of all the projects, but also if you link on one of the projects, you will see the actual uh, project description. But again, I'll show it to you in a few minutes. Uh, okay, so now who proposes a project? Well, clearly these are pro pro projects that came out of Matrix employees. So Matrix people, Matrix employees, engineers with a technical background provide projects, clearly. But now we're also open to external proposers. So professors, for example, if you have ideas, you think these are ideas that can work well for projects because you've got feedback from other um, industry or other students, and you will you would like them to be up there in our list. You just you know reach out to us. Or I can show you later. There is a form that you can fill out in the GitHub repository to propose a new project. But also industry partners. As I said, uh, we already discussed with our uh, partners, with our customers, and that's how uh, we create some of the projects. But um, industry part partners can create their own projects directly. And we have already worked with these two companies, GM and Quantzer. And they they like the program very much, and they're going to propose a couple of projects. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with them. I guess you know GM, General Motors, which is one of the largest automakers based uh, based in USA. And Quantzer is a company that provides hardware solutions for education and research, and is based in Canada. Okay, so that said, so I will go fast on this because I, uh, I have the intention to show you the actual web page. Uh, but this is how a project uh, might look like. So it's a couple of page. So we try to have a lot of motivational content. So here in the motivation uh, section, we provide all the information about why this, um, this project is important, why it's an actual um, topic that can be relevant for, for the community. Um, then we have the actual project description part. So we provide a summary of what to do and how to do it. And what is important, I believe, are the suggested steps. It's a way to direct students to the right you know, uh, solution, just providing, uh, again, suggested steps. It doesn't have to be like this, but, uh, but I, guess, I guess breaking down the project in steps makes uh, students' life much easier. Um, and then project variations, uh, so that we can uh, have even a, a wider, um, broader uh, uh, range of solutions using this variation, and then advanced project work. So the reason why we have advanced work is because sometimes um, higher level students, master or PhD, can work on this project. They want to work on this project. So this is the first part, probably is the basic part for undergraduate students. And then again, they can go beyond and do something that is more difficult and even uh, involve some research. Um, and eventually we provide background material. So background material is everything we can provide to let the student students start working on this project. So we, we try to provide available examples that they can the students can use to start with. So 
so they don't have to start from scratch because otherwise they, they will be more difficult. And of course, uh, papers, suggested readings to you know, go even deep, uh, deeper on that particular project. And then we provide other information, but what is important here is this project discussion forum. Um, I will go back to it in a, in a minute. Okay, so once that students uh, see this project, let's say they like it, uh, you might wonder, how do you know who's working on what, right, on which project? So we have this form. See, there is a link here. All the students have to do if they like this project. The link on this click and this form show up. It's just a Microsoft form with some information for the students to let us let us know, uh, you know, who they are and what, what they're working on. And eventually, we will use this data just, you know, for, for our own uh, statistics and to provide the rewards eventually to the student. <clears throat> okay, um, how do we support the students? So this is a very uh, common question. Uh, do we provide mentorship? Do we not? I mean, uh, by default, we do not provide mentorship. And the reason why we don't do that, it's, it's very simple because otherwise the program would not be scalable. Uh, just to give you a few numbers. So at the moment we have about 50 projects listed and more than 180 students sign up for these uh, projects. So if we had to provide a direct mentorship, one-on-one -on -one mentorship to students, well, you can clearly see that this would be uh, very, very difficult, if not impossible. Uh, and at the moment, what we are providing is this discussion forum, but it's been enough. And I can tell you that just few students, few teams have asked for extra help. But, but again, of course, we will continue to monitor the, the, monitor the program. And if we see uh, needs for more mentorship, then we will uh, try to consider it. But again, it's, it's difficult given these numbers. But again, as I said, what we do provide right now it's um, this discussion forum. So I don't know if you're familiar with GitHub repositories. GitHub int recently introduced this new feature called discussion. So in this discussion, um, uh, students can ask questions about a, a particular project. So what we actually did is creating one discussion per project. So every project has a discussion forum associated to it. Um, so during uh, on the discussion, and students can ask questions, can even collaborate with each other. So we will always try to answer all the questions. There is always an engineer uh, behind these um, these discussion forums, uh, and they will answer all the questions that students have. But as I mentioned, students can can also collaborate with each other. What I saw and, and I really like so much um, is that I've seen students asking. Uh, other students to collaborate and, and they do. They say, okay, why don't we work together? Uh, give me your email and they start working together on a project, even though they are in a different part of the world. And this is just an example of one of the project discussion. So you can see here, it's, it's much bigger than this, but uh, it's been working very well. <clears throat> okay, so what are the benefits for Matrix? I guess I already uh, talked about some of the benefits, uh, the concrete examples. That's what I mentioned already. Um, customer feedback, students are great in providing feedback. They can say, you know, uh, this, this feature, this function, uh, it's difficult to use or it doesn't work as well as I thought. So this is very uh, helpful feedback for us to, to improve our tools, of course. Um, building a full-time or intern hiring pipeline. This is important for us, but also for, for you and students because this is like a, a pool of talents, right? So through the program, we can see uh, talented students and perhaps after the submission, we can, we can hire them uh, directly. So we can build something like this, uh, this is great. And of course, sometimes through the students, we can also engage with, the, with their advisor. And as I mentioned earlier at the beginning of this presentation, uh, what one of the things that my, me and my team do, it's um, starting these research collaborations. And this could be a good avenue for doing that as well. And of course, uh, marketing examples and user stories. So here in this slide, I just wanted to show you that we actually did have our homework before starting this program. Uh, we, we didn't just start the, this program thinking, okay, we're going to do a good job like this. No, we, we tried to get 
suggestions and feedback from all the professors we had you know good contact relationship with and given their suggestions and feedback we build around uh, this program so that's why for example some of the things that we have in the program these open-ended projects the reason why we don't uh, have specific requirement requirements is that because most of the professors told us that uh, com uh, coming up with these requirements is something that students have to do as part of their educational experience um, and also uh, providing starting material which was another uh, suggestion so the background material that I was uh, talking about so providing some initial example that's that's important um, to have some something to start with and after we uh, had the initial version of the program all the professors like the real world um, character of this project so that's the feedback again and again we continuously try to get more feedback of course that's why we are also here if you have any feedback of course questions later on but uh, that, that is very helpful please uh, give us feedback and we will always try to improve the program uh, so now let me quickly uh, show you the web page so as I mentioned already this is a github repository and here there is the main the main page with this table of content so all the projects are here listed in this page so I'm not going to go to all of them but at the same time uh, if you if you're looking for a project on robotics you can just click on robotics and here you will see all the, all the robotics related projects um, I mentioned the discussions here you can click on the discussions or through a project you can go directly into uh, that project discussion and here you can see well we have many discussions one per project and you can see how it's working so there are um, students asking questions the engineer here answering the questions and providing more information and, and again so this is huge it's working very well okay um, yeah so I guess now we can move to the next part of this uh, presentation so Lauren will give us an overview of the um, success stories of the program and the student programs so Lauren please go ahead great thanks Roberto you can go ahead and go to the next slide so some examples of success that we've had so far um, we had a professor from florida a m university who reached out to us about a year ago when we were building this program and said they would like us to propose a program for their senior design uh, class and this set of students over here worked on an engine air path control um, and if you go to the next slide roberto you can see um, some of the quotes that we got um, and I'll call out that the student team said that the project was very much aligned with their interests and their studies. And I think this is really important um, in capstone programs that the projects that the students are working on are fun and something that they want to do in the real world after they graduate. Um, and then the professor said that the GitHub repository um, gives students a foundation to explore solutions to grand challenges. Um, and I think the theme of grand challenges is something you are all um, somewhat familiar with. So as we as we grow this program, we'd love more ideas on how we can better tie this to grand challenges. Um, so that was an example where we had a professor reach out to us and say they wanted to work with us. Um, as Roberto mentioned earlier, um, students can also find these projects on their own and decide that they want to work on them. And as someone who's been working for, with students you know, for over 13 years, I've realized students are incredibly motivated to do things on their own. Um, and we had a student from Canada named Jacob reach out and say, hey, I want to work on this autonomous race car project. Um, and as part of this you know he made a solution he actually got a little more hands-on support from the engineer who proposed this project um, you know they had a couple quick calls together but in the end this is a project that probably would have taken us you know six eight months to complete and the student was able to work on it for in two to three months um, so they received their certificate of accomplishment um, and then they also posted on LinkedIn about how much this project helped them and he's currently a sophomore and he's currently interviewing to be an intern at MathWorks so these are really exciting um, examples and we'd love to see more of these and hopefully these examples will inspire some questions maybe from from this group 
Um, so next slide. So I also, um, as I mentioned earlier, um, I'm responsible for a bunch of different student programs and um, would really like to see students join MathWorks. And one of the main ways that students get into the MathWorks is through our engineering development group. Um, and we hire students at all levels, so bachelor's, master's, and PhD. And ultimately they come in and for about three months they do some really hands-on training with our product. And then they work on different projects. Um, so you can see um, on the left, I guess, when you're looking at your screen, um, some of the areas that the EDGers go into. So technical marketing, application engineering, um, customer training. So many different paths. And it's really nice because you can use um, the EDG program to explore these different areas and then decide longer term where you would like to work at MathWorks. Um, we also hire um, in various different degrees. Um, and you can see computer science, electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, um, but it's really open. There's a link in this presentation um, that hopefully can get shared afterwards and you can learn more and talk to your students about these opportunities. Um, so I just wanted to give you an idea um, of projects that students work on as part of this EDG program. Um, so when they come in um, after three months, once they're trained, their next task is to look at a set of projects that are proposed on an pro internal project board um, and then work on those projects and reach out to the um, managers of those groups and work with those groups on these projects. So you can see like there is a great range of product projects that they can work on. Um, which I think is super exciting. And I think as a student, you know, had I been able to do that in my first year of work, I really would have loved that. So I, I think this program is incredibly valuable um, and really exciting. Um, we also hire interns and co-ops. Um, so these interns are located all over the world. Um, and, you know, we hire them throughout all different seasons. Um, a lot of our interns are summer internships, but we do have other internships that go on throughout the year. Um, and we did internships during COVID. So, you know, we've been remote as a company and our interns have been working remotely, um, which is really great. A lot of companies have stopped doing intern programs during COVID. So it was really exciting that we kept this going and it worked out really well. Um, I know I'm talking to mostly engineers here, but we do have internships in other departments as well. Um, so marketing, finance, IT, sales. Um, and last year we had 450 interns around the world. So it's a pretty big program and I just wanted to share that all with everybody. Um, we have a MATLAB student ambassador program. Um, so this program has been around for about four years now. Um, and we have ambassadors all over the world. Um, they, they join MathWorks, they get some, um, they join MathWorks on their campus. So they, they work for us um, as an ambassador for MATLAB on the campus that they're a part of. And we generally have one ambassador per school. Um, and as part of this, they strengthen their understanding of MATLAB and Simulink, and they build their career skills. It's a paid position. Um, it's five hours per week in terms of commitment, but it's also flexible. So if they have exams, you know, they might not work one week. Um, and we have over 100 ambassadors around the world. Um, so this is a, a great program. We're looking to continue to expand it. Our current list of um, you know, where we have ambassadors around the world is located at this link. And you can see the green um, is where we currently have ambassadors. Yellow is where we're just starting. And then the other areas of the world, you know, we, we'd love to get started there, but we're still exploring those areas. Um, so this is a great thing. And, you know, if you work with MathWorks and, you know, you have an account manager or anything and you're interested in learning more about this program or potentially having an ambassador at their school, you know, please let, let them know. You can also reach out to me as well. Um, one of the major things that I've worked on at MathWorks since I've been here is our student competition program. Um, this is a fairly large program. Um, we support many different areas. Auto, aero, and robotics are the biggest, but we also do things with math and programming and finance. Um, we're supporting 53 competitions around the world. Um, we have a team of engineers that um, help support these 53 competitions. We're very heavily involved in SAE, um, which I think many people around the world are familiar with. Um, we supported over 5,000 teams with mentorship um, and training. And we also have our own competition called the MathWorks Mini Drone Program. 
um, and this is a small Parrot Mini drone. It's something that you can bring into your curriculum or you could potentially run a drone competition at your school and it's nicely packaged up so that you're able to kind of implement it on your own. And sometimes even the ambassadors that I just talked about help run these at different campuses. And then I have two more quick things that I wanted to share. Um, so we currently partner with Driven Data to run data science challenges. And we have a data science challenge going on right now. It's called Deep Chimpact, which is pretty fun. Um, and there's, if you use MATLAB, you have the ability to win up to $10,000. Um, and anyone can enter this. So this isn't just for students. It's actually for anybody in the world um, to enter. So um, you can register at that link below, and this is open until November 15th. And we generally do two of these a year, so something to keep an eye on um, going forward. And then lastly, um, we have our Simulink Student Challenge. So this is um, a program where a student only can submit a video of how they use Simulink. We judge them, we post them on YouTube, and then, um, there's prizes. The cool thing this year that I wanted to end with is that if you do an excellence and innovation project and submit it as part of the Simulink Student Challenge, you're gonna get some bonus points. Um, but to be clear, this is open to students enrolled in degree granting institutions. So a couple of calls to action. We'd love to know what you think. You know, Let us know in the chat, let us know in your feedback. Um, let students know about these programs um, and reach out to us if you have new ideas, um, especially for the Excellence and in Innovation Program, like if you have ideas of industry partnerships or projects that are missing from the list, you know, we'd love to hear that. So I think I'll turn it over to Q&A and discussion. Um, Roberto and my information is below and there's some summary links here on the main things that we talked about today. So thanks everybody. Thanks. Thanks, Roberto and Lauren. I think PJ, do you want to take over or should I just get started with one or two questions on my own? And then Oh, please feel free to get started, Krishna. Thank you. And then, and then pump up the audience for questions because they haven't been active, very active so far. Okay, everybody, there's lots of people out there and I know all of you have been using MathWorks, Math, MathWorks tools, your own colleges as students or faculty and I'm sure you have lots of exciting questions. So just jump in and chat. Uh, and if any of you want to talk, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll try to unmute you also. My, my question, Lauren, is um, I was excited to hear about uh, uh, the grand challenges, okay, that you're doing something in the grand challenges. And I think that's something that, that's uh, music to the ears of many people around the world, including Hans and others. And wondering if somehow we can increase that, uh, um, do work, maybe have a, 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 a global competition on, on grand challenges for students who are on different grand challenges. I don't know, just, just thought. Yeah, right? love that thought. Um, and would love to talk to you more about how we might do that and maybe even do something through the Excellence and in Innovation Program um, with yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, indeed, one of the ideas we had is that to review all the different solutions that one project may, may, may get and do a competition out of that. So maybe uh, give some prize uh, to the winner of, of that you know, to the best solution, if you will, of that particular project. So yeah, there are many ideas we can do. Thanks. Okay, we want real questions. And everybody's saying great presentation and I learned a lot and excellent and so on, but that, that's great. All good to hear that. Keep up the good work, Juan Juan says, and uh, Rajesh Abram says, excellent presentation. I was not aware of these opportunities. Uh, PJ, do you want to? Do you want to? I, I don't want to step on your toes here. If you want to be taking over, what do you want to do? No, I think it's. I think it's great to. There are some questions that I'm seeing in the chat that have come up. Um, so, that feel free to, Krishna. Some that I'm seeing here is, can a team work on one project or is it one student per project always? Is one question. Yeah. Yeah. Good question. So. <clears throat> oh. Anyone can work on a project, whether it's a person, an individual, or a team. Actually, we think of these projects more for team uh, of students. So for example, that's what happened during these uh, capstone senior design projects, right? So a team of students work together, and that might make the uh, you know the submission, the solution of the project, the implementation, if you will, uh, easier. But again, uh, everyone is free to work alone or or with a team. So yeah. 
there is no limit or limitation we don't prohibit we don't force a single person or a team to work together okay keep going pj a second question that i see here is what is the level of difficulty of these projects what level are you targeting for students if you could just add some color to that right 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 so yeah we with the structure that we have of our of our projects we try to target all level of students so from undergraduate to graduate level so as i mentioned earlier so we have these uh, basic steps or basic uh, goal if you will of a project so that could target more undergraduate students then with advanced project work we can target master up to phd student level so there is also some some research side in the advanced project work so again we can then allow us to uh, target uh, you know wider range of to the students thanks for the question yeah, and I'll just add that the two examples we showed, um, Jacob was a sophomore, so second year for everyone around the world in school, and then the group of students that worked with us from Florida, they were uh, in their fourth year, so senior year. Here's another question about ambassadors. Um, one person asked, I'd like an ambassador at my school, who can I contact? Yeah, so I think you can reach out to me. Um, and my email is on this page, so write it down. <laughs> um, and then we, we can talk if it's in a country where we have a model to hire. Um, it could be pretty straightforward. Um, if it's somewhere that we haven't started hiring in the map that I showed earlier, you know, I'd love to hear more about what you think the need is and we can discuss and see what, what can happen. So, Lauren, a follow-up to that one is, could you explain a little bit about what an ambassador does? What would be the expectations of an ambassador on campus? Sure. So, ambassadors um, generally work about 40 to 60 hours a semester is what we're seeing. So, what we like them to do is run two to three events uh, with the student community. A lot of them are partnering with student societies, um, and they're doing intro to MATLAB, intro to Simulink. Um, some of it is based on their backgrounds. You know, we've, we've had people with a finance background be an ambassador, so they've run a finance event. Um, but we do have um, packaged up materials and guidelines to help students run these events, because as we all know, running events is a lot of work. Um, so two to three events. Um, and then they also are tasked with establishing a social media um, presence on their campus. So some of them integrate into an existing social media channel. Um, some of them start their own pages. Um, and we've generally been using Facebook and Instagram and Twitter um, to do that. Um, but then in other countries like, you know, uh, China, we're using other local channels as well. Um, so th those are the main things that they do. And then they check in about twice a month with a technical point of contact uh, from MathWorks about what their plans are and how things are going. And at the beginning of each semester, the ambassadors set up what their plan is um, for that semester. So hopefully that helps. There also seems to be interest in the mini drone competition. Could you explain a little bit more about what's a mini drone competition like and how would uh, I get started at my school? Yeah, so I think one great thing to take a look at is the web page. It's the just type in MathWorks mini drone and you'll come, the page will come up in your search. Um, but ultimately, the mini drone is um, a two uh, stage uh, competition. So there's a simulation round where students are given a simulation and asked to improve it to follow um, a line following uh, track. And then um, students have about two to three months to complete that, um, improve the model that we gave them to start with. Um, and then we generally pick the top seven to 10 teams uh, to go to a live event. Um, and we have been having some live events around the world. It is a competition that can be run with some social distancing, um, so that's good. But if we haven't been able to do the live event, we've been taking the top you know, seven to 10 models and having the teams do a presentation on what they did. Um, and then we're, we're kind of judging the winners based on what, what they um, 
showed us and you know what they presented um, so so that that's the way it works it's generally run you know anywhere between three to six months you can space out the timeline a bit but you need about three months to, to set this up you know in your classroom as a competition um, but we have seen some teachers actually take the um, model and just use it in curriculum and use it as some examples for some of the things that they're trying to teach um, and we're actually uh, working on publishing a virtual lab uh, for this um, as well. So more to come on that, hopefully, um, in early next year. Great. Um, Roberta, I think this one's for you. I have a project I'd like to propose for excellence and innovation. Who can I talk to about this? <laughs> yeah, well, definitely you can talk to us. I mean, you, you, you can see our contacts here. So either me or Lauren. Uh, but also, if you are uh, actually let me let me show it directly um, from the web page, if I found it. Okay. So here in the web page, there is a form. If you are fully interested in further information, provide feedback or nominate a new project, contact us here. So this is another Microsoft form. Um, if you don't, you know, remember our contact information, uh, you can just fill out this form, and at the end, you can you can tell us what do you want from us? Like if it's to obtain more information, provide feedback or all of them. And here you can click on nominate a project, but you can click all of them. We will reply almost immediately as fast as possible. And we can discuss with you or maybe we can provide you a project template that you can fill out. Or again, we can, we, we can work together for writing the project down. But yeah, that's something that we, we are open to. Great, I think, uh... That, uh, those of you who have been listening, uh, the person who's been fielding the earlier questions was uh, PJ Boardman, who is the Global Director for Education Marketing. Really appreciate your uh, support of programs in all over the world in particular, and in India in particular, because I'm more involved with them. Thank you, PJ. I have a couple of questions from my end here. Uh, there's a student from Iran and saying, are these programs are available, uh, applicable for Iranian students? So that, that's a good question. Um, you know, we follow the U.S. Uh, software uh, compliance. So unfortunately, no, it, it, they're not available right now. Okay. Uh, another question, are these projects available on GitHub? Yes. Yes, it's a GitHub repository. So oh, let me put it up again. All right. Let's... Uh, Okay, let's hear it from the audience some more. Come on, guys. There are more than almost 100 people here. Let's have some few more comments, questions, discussions. Also, to follow up to the previous questions, if, if the meanwhile there aren't any. Um, so beside the actual uh, list of projects, the people can also find the solutions on GitHub as well. So just to give you an example here, there is a... Yeah, see, for this project, we, we got already two solutions. You can click on current submissions and you will find the solutions on their own GitHub repository. So for example, this is a, a Jacob, I think. Um, so I, uh, Jacob is the student that Lauren mentioned earlier. So he provided a solution in uh, his own GitHub repository. As you can see, there is some nice report and explanation and then you can run, you can download the, the solution and run it on your computer. So everything will be accessible through GitHub from the main page of the uh, Matter Text Center Innovation list. Excellent. Uh, there is a poll that I think um, you put together, right? You want to go through that now? Sure. sure. Let's just do that while we look around. Let's see. Select the poll. Launch. Okay, do you think that actual mentorship from MathWorks engineers should be provided to students and how important do you think it is? Uh, please select one. Necessary for student success would be good to have, but not necessary, not needed. Boy, the responses are coming in real fast. Okay, here we go. <laughs> no one is clicking on the third option. No one is clicking on the third option, by the way. <laughs> Expected. <laughs> There's an unnecessary option in the bottom there. All right, a few more votes. Come on, we got most of you getting voted, but um, a few more.
All right, I'm going to close uh, and display the results and share. So, um, as I said, no one voted for the not needed part of it. That was, but then it is necessary. So that's 78%. Uh, it would be good, but not necessary. 22%. So, so really, that's that's really a, a, a strong statement uh, for you guys in uh, MathWorks. And uh, I'm just curious how. Uh, how effective have you found this mentoring program to be? And I'm particularly, you know, I'm, I'm I'm working and talking about India, for example, and I haven't asked this question of my of the, the MathWorks team in in uh, in India, but I should probably ask them that question. Uh, but what, are you, can I talk a little bit more about the mentoring program around the world. Any both of you? Yeah. So currently we're not by default providing mentorship um, mm -hmm. and we're really letting the students use the discussion board um, but in the example that we showed where Jacob you know worked with us and made this great solution you know we, we did provide some light mentorship um, mm -hmm. so I think ultimately we are open to providing mentorship but we will want to understand um, what the requirements are, um, you know, and the effort that we would have to put in to be to be able to mm -hmm. do these to make them successful. Um, but we have been hearing, you know, that that some light mentorship, you know, would would be available. And I'm curious, you know, people can send us an email after, you know, if you voted yes, you, we definitely need mentorship. I'd love to hear like what you think that mentorship would include, right? Um, because like I said, the one success story was about, you know, three to four hours of an engineer's time to, to really get that student to that next level and get the results published. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you might be able to actually get some um, volunteers. And like in our network in India, we have this Indo-Universal collaboration. You might get able to get some folks who are not directly working for MathWorks, but those actually using it at these colleges who are willing to be part of a voluntary network yeah, that might, I don't know, it's, I mean, but of course you have to do some quality control there and make sure that there's, they're doing all the things properly. But um, yeah, all kinds of possibilities. But, but yeah, but that's a great idea. So we had that thought right in the past to, to use uh, to outsource the, uh, the resources, if you will. Um, and there has been some interest from some professors already in providing mentorship. So that's something we could definitely consider. But yeah, it might be some, something that can be a seed of it can be planted in India. Maybe just try it out because you work very closely with your team in mm -hmm. India. May I, I might even just suggest that to to Anand or Viju when I talk to them next. I mean, you know, we work very closely with the team in India, so check it out. Right. I don't know, maybe some of them might be listening right now. Who knows? <laughs> Later in the evening, so probably not likely. All right, uh, PJ, you want to add any comments of your own? I mean, from your perspective, and uh, and then we'll give it over to Hans to to talk about the IFEs and other stuff. Well, I think uh, what I'd just like to add is um, how grateful we are for the collaboration with this team and with this community. And I think R Lauren and Roberto have done a great job in sharing what this program is, and we want to continue this dialogue with all of you. So we hope that you'll participate. We hope that you'll contribute projects and um, we can keep this dialogue going and we really value our collaboration with all of you and um, specifically with you Krishna, Hans and the entire team so thank you. Um, I do have one last question for Roberto and Lauren is are you looking for key projects that you want to ask this community to contribute and in which areas would you like to prioritize? So yeah that's a good question so good projects are always welcome of course in the area so yeah that's a good point so we have no projects on neuroscience, so I don't know if this is the right audience. But if you have any ideas on um, AI on the edge, for example, like uh, taking a deep learning model, for example, and uh, deploy it on actual hardware, if you see any specific uh, I mean, uh, application for this, uh, whether it's robotics, uh, I don't know, industry, manufacturing, things that are actual, that's yeah, that's that's great. So we're gonna try to add more on that topic, but uh, seems to be a very a very important topic. Many professors have uh, have asked for it. So yeah, but anything, any any other ideas? It's, uh, it's always it's always get it's always great to get to get. Okay, uh, Hans, you want to jump in here and yeah, thank and you, thank you very much, uh, Lawrence. Can, can you hear me, uh, Krishna? Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I, I really want to express on behalf of our global community, Lauren and Roberto, this has been one of the most effective, articulate presentations in our webinar series. And I will work, make sure our team works to share this, this very thoughtful reflection with our global community. This is one point I just want to make. Of course, it's consistent with the partnership, serious partnership that we've had for, for, for many years with PJ and many of you, Lauren, we've known each other in terms of that we value that partnership. And you've been supporting, working with us on forthcoming events that all of us very, very much appreciate. A couple of very concrete things that come to mind. What I noticed on your map, where you have your student ambassadors, perhaps I did not see it correctly, I didn't see connections in both Latin America and Africa. And I'd like to plant the seeds for the next year, not only as we move toward Madrid, where we have our conference, which you are supporting in different ways, next year in Cape Town, South Africa. Let's talk, I can introduce you directly to some awesome leaders in both of those regions that I know would be very interested to, to, to work with you and to listen to the materials. And one of the other seeds I want to plant is possible perhaps one of your colleagues gives such a presentation in Spanish and or Portuguese. And I can facilitate that because we work very, very strongly with the Latin American GDC, the Global Engineering Deans Council, that group is, is just fabulous. And just for you to know, they just completed, and this is another subject, uh, uh, a survey uh, looking at all Latin America, bringing in students faculty, deans, and all that on mental health issues and how that's impacting. It's the first that I've seen engineering leaders at a more global regional level look at that issue. Again, that's another conversation uh, per se, but I wanted to plant that particular seed. I love the idea. I mean, I've of course, PJ has, has educated me about the exciting work of, of, of MathWorks for, for years per se, but do, uh, for me to better understand this whole notion of the student ambassador, I think it's awesome. When you look at the Global Engineering Deans Council, we have several hundred members, deans, who are leading colleges. I would love to work with you and identify maybe 10 universities to start off. Maybe in some parts of the world you don't work with and to, for you to dialogue, for example, this ambassadorship is, is awesome. As you know, our office, Aliki Sam and I are at George Mason University. I work closely with the University of New Mexico, the Maryland University. This is this country, but there are others. So I'm planting seeds. I'd love for us to think about not only Madrid, where we have an important student engagement. And again, I'm not sure what dialogue you have currently with our student leaders. I wanna, again, plant the seeds for next year also in Cape Town in November 22, for example. And we're particularly already in discussions and as co-chair also uh, to, to engage our African community per se. A couple of other things that math works, I just want this, this, this audience to, to hear about that. Of course, Madrid. As co-chair, I worked with a, 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 a team of just absolutely committed, brilliant professionals in Madrid. And the challenge, obviously, is our current world, you know, the, the virus world and, and what have you. We will be there physically presence and certainly online per se. And uh, one of the challenges, certainly the students, you know, I was hoping certainly we have many, many more students. There'll be students coming into Madrid from the Madrid universities physically but most will be online per se. So, but the notion of students and, and having a program of students as part of our Madrid conference is very, very important, again, without going to details per se. Also, uh, so this is coming up, MathWorks has been su supportive and is of our Duncan Frazier Award, which we'll be celebrating in Madrid, very important. And also, uh, and, and PJ know, knows this, and, and Krishna, working with some awesome women leaders, our four editions of Rising to the World, we are coming out in a week or two, our edition on India, written by Indian women leaders of engineering, of, of uh, not only academic, but, but corporate and, and what have you, and also Africa. So that's coming out in the next couple of weeks. And again, MathWork has been, and continues to be an important, deeply, deeply valued partner. And I look forward to deepen even that relationship and follow up on some of the specific ideas that we just touched upon. P uh, uh, Lauren, Roberto, and PJ, many, many thanks. And I give it back to you, Krishna. 
Okay, thank, time to say goodbye, folks. Uh, thanks, uh, Roberto, Lauren, and PJ, and the audience over here from all over the world. So, good night, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are. Take care. Peace be with you. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>